Today we're going to do our Cornell notes a little differently. We're still going to draw a line around about two inches down, creating an area for our keywords and an area for our notes. But today we're going to do our summary not at the bottom of this page, but on the opposite page to the left. So as you take notes today, you'll continue taking notes, and if you need to go to the next page, you can continue with the Cornell notes there. The directions for the summary will be at the end of today's lecture. Today's lesson on Chinese ingenuity is going to cover waterways, coal and iron production, paper money, magnetic compass, the mechanical clock, movable type printing, porcelain, smallpox inoculation, abacus, and the Great Wall. China has produced some of the world's greatest hydroelectric engineering projects. One of the most impressive was the building of the Grand Canal. Construction of the first Grand Canal began in the early 600s to connect the Yellow River in the north with the Yangtze River in the south. Tens of thousands of Chinese were forced under threat of death to work on the canal system, a project that lasted for many centuries. Once the canal was complete, people carrying messages, ships carrying rice and silk were able to travel back and forth from faraway parts of China. In the early 4th century, the Chinese had discovered the use of coal, which they called black earth, as fuel. It wasn't until almost 2,000 years later that the English will start using it as a form of fuel. The Chinese would use coal to melt iron. The Chinese began to produce uh, cast iron goods as early as the second century AD. Later, by taking the carbon out of the cast iron, the Chinese were able to manufacture steel. This was used to make swords, arrow tips, and armor. Iron was also forged to make tools for farmers and carpenters, such as irons and nails and needles. Uh, iron was also used in ship anchors, bridges, uh, pagodas, and Buddhist statues. The Chinese invented paper money in the 9th century. Paper money was originally called flying money because it was so light it could fly out of one's hands. In the previous centuries, the Chinese had used copper and sometimes iron as currency. However, this metal money was difficult to carry and transport because it was so heavy. When copper became scarce and printing on paper became more widespread, merchants began to issue their own bills of exchange and letters of credit, paper certificates that could be exchanged for cash to customers and other merchants. Eventually, the Song government took over the printing of paper and began issuing official certificates. The Chinese were using compasses two centuries before the rest of the world. To create a south pointing compass, the Chinese used a pointer in the shape of a spoon or ladle made of a magnetic lodestone and a bronze plate with directions on it. The spoon was placed on the center of the plate where it rotated and pointed south. This device was used for navigation and for aligning of city streets and buildings. One of the greatest inventions of the medieval world was the mechanical clock developed in China around 725 AD. This first model operated by dripping water. It ran 24 hours a day using wheels, shafts, hooks, pins, locks. A bell rang every hour and a drum beat every quarter hour. The picture that you're looking at here is a clock that was developed around 1092 and this is a three-story clock, again, powered by water. To the right, you're looking at a bunch of clay bricks, each one carved with an individual Chinese characters. You're looking at the movable type printing. To the left, the paper that which the Chinese characters were printed on. Movable type printing was invented by a commoner named Bi Sheng around the year 1045. The bricks were carved in clay and then baked until hard. After the necessary characters were placed into an iron frame and then held with wax, pages would then be printed. 
This, of course, made books printing faster and easier and made more books available to more people. This invention eventually made its way to Europe about 400 years later. The Chinese had been making pottery for centuries, but during the Tang Dynasty, Chinese artists learned that a mineral feldspar could be added to white clay to make white porcelain. When the special clay called kaolin is fired at high temperatures, it becomes translucent, water-resistant, and extremely hard. During the Song and the Ming dynasties, porcelain artistry reached new heights as hundreds of thousands of workers crafted the clay into porcelain statues and art objects that were the envy of many foreigners. It would be another thousand years before Europeans learned how to make porcelain. The first breakthrough in inoculations against smallpox disease was made in China. Smallpox, a deadly virus disease characterized by skin blisters drying to scab-coated pustules and leaving crater-like scars, existed in Europe, Asia, Africa from the 10th century and onward. Around 1000 AD, the Chinese were starting to use the technique of inoculation. They started using cowpox, a genetically linked disease found in cows. They would rub the skin raw of a person and then wrap to it tightly cow meat contaminated with cowpox in hope that it would help vaccinate the individual against smallpox. The Chinese developed the abacus during the Song Dynasty. On a standard abacus, each bead above the cross bead is worth five units, and each below is worth one. The rungs from right to left indicates units, like tens and hundreds and so on. With this instrument, the Chinese could easily add and subtract and multiply and divide. The abacus became the basic calculating device in Asia and the Near East, and it is still widely used for commercial purposes today. The Great Wall of China is one of the legendary seven wonders of the world, and it started building in 221 BC. The construction involved forced labor of hundreds of thousands of Chinese, many of whom died from harsh working conditions and were buried in the wall itself. The completed wall that we see today was completed during the Ming Dynasty. It consists of 15,000 defense towers and forts along the wall, as well as... Peasant army troops were stationed at different points behind the wall to provide additional security against attack. During the Ming Dynasty, much of the 3,665-mile wall was rebuilt. Here we are at the end. We're going to do our summary a little differently today. We're going to do them just to the left of our notes on that opposite page. Go ahead and turn your journal sideways. We're going to use the whole page. We're going to create a spectrum. We're going to evaluate each of these Chinese achievements on how they influence our own society. Draw a line. Put least on one side, most on the other. Of course, put a title, Chinese achievements that greatly affect our community today. And then I would like you to list the achievements where you think they belong on the, on the spectrum. And then tell me why you put them there. It's pretty simple, and it'll get us to think about those achievements one more time.